We're here. 50 some years, I'm finally here. <laughs> you have no idea what this means to me, Lee. <laughs> There's the man, Bill Shankly. He won a lot of titles. Ah, if I could just hold it now. There I am. I'm with Bill Shankly, hearing his name on the radio when I was a kid, shortwave radio. There's the man, Bob Paisley. Boy, they don't give you any view, man. I could not look inside at all. The doors are off. I guess glass would be broken. People would break in, I guess. Oh, uh, I even offered a guard a bribe. He says, heck, they won't even let me in. But here I am at the COP at Anfield Road Stadium. Yay! Fellow, the godfather of football in Liverpool, John Holding. Um, you see him here in all his regalia with his, his uh, medals and badge things on here because he was the Lord Mayor of Liverpool in his time. But the reason we call him the Godfather of Football is on the opposite corner to where we are now, his house is still there standing where, where he lived. Okay, folks, does anybody watch LFC TV? Yeah, well, as you can see, we've got a great expense with the LFC TV studios. <laughs> uh, it's a massive, massive broadcasting unit. Uh, that's the, the, the heart and soul of LFC TV. We'll move on with it. <laughs> Blood Red Broadcast and... 
This is Stanley Park where Everton actually began playing. But it's the heart of the Liverpool story. Top 10 Premier League streamers that Steven Gerrard ever scored. You watch each one of them goals, any one of them could be seen in their goal of the century. That's how good he was as a striker. But probably his most famous game was in 2004 in the, the Champions League competition. We had to beat Olympiacos by two clear goals. As usual, Liverpool, we made it hard work and Steven Gerrard led us to victory in that game. And we went, as he frequently did, lead us from behind to victory. Uh, and he led us to the 2005 uh, Istanbul final at the Athletic Six Stadium behind the other side and it would have been a joy to watch. John Barnes, probably one of the most skillful players ever to play football in Britain. Google him, YouTube him when you get home. Have know. a look at some of his skills. King Kenny, as we call him, or as the Queen calls him, Sir Kenny Dalglish. The only person uh, in the history of the club, which is 130 years old, to have parts of the stadium named after him, such as the esteem in which he's held by the club. Now, it doesn't only go back to his playing days. We bought him in 1977 from Celtic to replace a fella called Kevin Keegan, who left us after our first European Cup uh, victory. Kenny paid us back in the first season by scoring the winning goal at Wembley against Bruges to give us our second European Cup. Apart from that, he went on to lead us to uh, other European victories, league victories, and a most skillful player probably to ever pull on a shirt at Liverpool Football Club. Uh, he was asked to come back as manager in the 85-86 season, which he agreed to do so, and he took on the role of manager of the club. Things didn't go well to start with. We were 10 points off the lead of the first division. Everton were at the top. <laughs> Everton, top of the first division. And we were 10 points behind them, we would have thought. So Kenny Daglish phoned up Bob Paisley, who we'll talk about in a minute. So I don't know what to do, boss, we're not doing very well. He said, tell you what to do, put your bloody boots back on. So he went, put his boots back on, at the age of 34, became our first player manager. And after that, we never lost a game. We clawed back 10 points on Everton and we won the league that season, so we beat Everton to second place. It's like two trophies then, isn't it? I knew we'd be playing the FA Cup final that year. Everton, I knew won. Correct. So we beat it, we destroyed Everton in one season. They haven't forgiven us, they still go on about it now. And Kenny Daglish will be forever immortalised. Not just because of his football stuff though, but in the aftermath of the Hillsborough disaster, this fella was an absolute superstar, going around, looking after the families, looking after the victims, the bereaved. Absolutely fantastic. But not only that, I mean, his missus do a hell of a lot for the city. Uh, I wasn't even aware until last year. I had, I had a little bit of a, a cancer scare, it's all clear. But I ended up getting tested in the Marina Daglish Cancer Care Centre, which they funded. Uh, as part of their work to put stuff back into the community, to, to put more stuff that goes back into the community. He's still an ambassador of the club uh, and he's here for every game. You'll see him in the director's box. He's like an honorary director of football at the club. So that is King Kenny, as we call him. In fact, he's King Kenny down the side there. Oh, he can skip it on that. Bob Paisley. Bill Shankly. And loyal to Liverpool Football Club. Scored. We won the first division title in his first season. We were, we were relegated very soon after, which his debut was interrupted by uh, World War II. But he was loyal to the club. He spent most of his time, most of his goals were caught, scored in the second division. But he's re renowned for being an absolute gent and one of the most skillful players who ever played football in that era. Uh, and that's why he's here as well. So an absolute idol in the club. But we are obviously still very well connected to our history. We'll move on a little bit now. No one can know this. Elisha Scott. Right, are you good at maps? I know. He was an LFC player. Shh, shh. We're going to talk about counting in a minute. Seasons or years? No. The LFC player from 1913 to 1934, 
So how long did he play for Liverpool for? How many years? 20? What? 21. 21. Oh, well, so well. did he not play this year then? This, this, did this he is, not play this year? I don't like to show him fans out. I don't know what the problem is with him. Anyway, he put them up. He had a release stand. Within that car park is uh, the, the memorial to the Heisel disaster, which some people do ask me about, uh, but we can't see it today. But this, this area is more deep rooted through the Liverpool's history. It was Everton's, now it's ours. <laughs> right, does that then, Bob? Let's go back to that room. We're supposed to walk up there and have a look at it, but it's rubbish. And What? This is the 96 who died, and of course others were severely injured. And that's that's Jackie's story. She lost. No, it was a the old original Everton colors. <laughs> Pepe Reina, he was a great one. And Gruce Grobelar, he was, that was when I was really following the last of the trophies. He had Bruce Grobelar was the yeah. goalkeeper, he had Michael Owen, uh, I think Robbie Fowler was still with the team at the time, or on his first trip, because he left and came back. But that's, that's the first goalkeeper I watched a game with where it was on TV that I could watch it. Otherwise, it was listening on, t listening on the radio. But his was the first one that was on ESPN. And Jerry Dudek, I remember Jerry Dudek. That's Douglas. So Roger Hunt, the Saint, Ian St. John, there we go, and Liddell Poole. It's a shame that Firmino got shoved to the background here this year, but how awesome. And there's King Kenny. King Kenny and Keegan because that was a big deal when Keegan left and then Kenny Dalglish just made everybody forget Keegan <laughs> this is too brilliant there you go oh which way does it go Ah, oh, right.
brilliant comebacks. <laughs> A little history bit. Yeah, and then you had Hazel too. Yeah, everybody remembers that, and then it turned around and happened. That's Bob Paisley right there. <laughs> All right. God, I remember that. There's Rafa, Kenny Douglas and Rafa. There's Bob Paisley. <laughs> Yeah. Benitez was a good coach, but yeah, ownership was going down at the time. Gerard Houllier. And then that triumvirate of Hopes dashed Roy Hodgson, I thought would be good. And they brought back Kenny Dalgish. They brought back Kenny Dalish, and, uh, and then I thought Brendan Rodgers might accomplish something, and he didn't. I am blown away. I gotta. I'm trying to make sure I don't get her on video, but. I'll just make sure I don't put any video up there. But the trophy, the trophy that means the most to me is the Premier League, and Jurgen's got to win more of those. I want League Cup. Of course, I've got the Z21, which is wired to the E-Cross. That's the mechanical side of it. You know, the camera trains. Right. That, that one's a camera train. Um, Got a couple on the shelf there, which are kind of well. I'm gonna sneak in here. Yeah, that, that's what I'm saying. It's a bit, if you can get through, I mean, my main thing. Oh, I, I can. I'll be very careful. It's a bit like the thing you've got to watch on the thing there, so I can get through there. But... Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I am actually at one of my meccas. This is Jim from Hover Motions. Amazing layout. I'll tell you what. This does not look smaller in person. This looks brilliant. 
I still got to fix my uh, windmill. You've got yours running over there. I got to fix mine. Yeah. I've got the parts. I finally found the last missing part. I just got to sit down and do it. And now oh, that yeah. I actually have time and motivation. Oh, well, Brian Finn from Finnerton Central asked me about it a long time ago. Do you mind if I do a quick uh, reverse? Uh, so, yeah. Oh, there we are. Yep, I got it. Jim from Hover Motion. I am, I'm not worthy, but he let me in anyhow. <laughs> this is amazing. When did you get in the attic at last? After all these years. Oh, I can't believe I'm here. I'm looking at these trains, and I don't know if it was just set up this way, but you've got the rail J, you got the ICEs. Yeah. It was like, you're thinking, yeah, I'll sit. This is just fabulous. Oh my gosh. The blimp, the balloon, the mountains. Now, is that an HO scale turbine or did you do the O scale? That's the uh, HO. Okay. Um, there are some N scale dealers, like the blip. That's right. You know, so it's just to give it some sort of height definition. You know, right? Exactly. And exactly. There's a couple of buildings in the distance that are engaged. They're not actually. Uh, I can see them. I can yeah. see them. But yeah, you get that perspective. And uh, the one that's still down to the right of you, that one, that was an operation in there. Oh, nice. Yeah. Because I had one guy from Germany, uh, he said just buy the O scale ones. They're closer to actual. Oh, yeah. But, I mean, part of that's got to be room. Yeah, so, that's the automation over. So, this is set at 12 o'clock. Uh, every 30 seconds equals one minute. So, okay. it's running at twice the normal speed of real time. You know, so. Gotcha. So, these, these are all the uh, schedules running on the timetable. So, if I, Press the start button to get things going. So all I do now is press one click, and that the layout will run for two and a half hours. Wow! Without me doing anything at all, I'll just work all the points. If, if there's any delays or holdups, it'll work it out and shuffle all. You know, right? If, it, if the point doesn't fire or there's, there's going to be a crash, that'll divert. You know, stop trains on blocks, just like in real life. You know. So I start that. So what we're gonna, what's going to happen now? Okay. Is I should have the little there should be a little train coming out the main station in about thirty seconds. That will go to the refueling depot. But we we'll just we should start going any second now. Just wait for it to pick up, pick up now. Just that here. Yeah. <laughs> We've just got this feeling, so it's not going to happen. This is too brilliant. Exactly. I'll leave that now. So we've got two trains coming out, two rail jets coming out at the same time. <laughs> we've, we've got the little French rail cars starting to leave the top end of the station. Let's see if I can get the camera on there. There we go. So if I go to here. Right. That's the, that's the camera running inside the rail jet. Nice. I think that's uh I gotta get a lag on that. I think the memory needs clearing up on that template. I had a guy in my club, uh Steve has one of the Roco camera uh ca uh cab camera railjet uh Taurus. Yeah, this tablet is an old tablet, it's not really that good. But I'm when I'm using it on a normal smartphone, it's really cool you put the camera on. Smart, uh, Steve used to love coming to my house and grabbing his tablet out, 
setting a couple of trains down. And while I'm setting my trains up, he starts running them. He just immediately taps into the Wi-Fi system that my Americans on, and he just like, yeah, I got it, and he just starts running my trains. Yeah. So these are they're coming out, and they'll just start to build up speed, you know, once we uh, do the uh, preparation lap, and then I'll we'll set set new routes, start speeding up. I was surprised Joyce hasn't come up yet, but. This is too cool, Jim. This is amazing. There it goes. <laughs> See, it waits, it, it handles it. It double checks to make sure all the junctions are clear before it will go off. Right. If something's running behind time, obviously not going to do it. It works in the, the same way as a real, you know, block system in a real way, I say. Right. Well, that's why it's just so, you know, to me, the the time and the effort to make it, and when somebody says, oh, I'm going to rip it all out, and I do it, it's like, hey, you've got... Lifting out that load. Oh, there it goes, right. I've actually got to engage the clutch. There's a clutch mechanism on this. I've just engaged the clutch. Okay. You got, a, you got an ICE coming out now. There you go. Oh. Say it a million times, they may be simple white with a red stripe, but I love my ICEs. Did he lose his load? Yeah, I think I went too far in that. Yep, I went too far. I think it went over on the floor. Yeah, I don't know that. That's fine. I'll just leave that for you. No, this is, sometimes people say layouts look better on TV. This, this is cooler in person. This is so much cooler in person. Just to be able to see. <laughs> Around this park, I went to meet him in his caravan. And that was sat in his caravan, I've been seeing him put some same biscuits and all sorts. Nothing wrong again. <laughs> so, it's all so much, isn't it? It's awesome. Yeah, I mean, it just... I turn into all my teenage words when I was a kid. It's awesome. It just, uh, you've got some very rare kits here and they're just, it's so cool to see them because even winding down here goes, Joyce and I really have to get back, but oh my God, this is sad, but too cool. Too cool. Bingo, let there be light. Jim's layout hover motion, one of the coolest channels and layouts on YouTube.